the spirit of Elijah. Now listen, let me talk a bit on prayer. The spirit of Elijah is also the spirit of prayer and supplication, not just the spirit, the prophetic spirit that foreruns revival. All through scripture, the price for the move of God has been prayer with fasting. That's why I, I recommended some of this, not prayer alone. There is something we have done to the fasting part, but it has always been prayer and fasting. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turning from their wicked ways. It says, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Are we together now? James chapter 5, when we read from verse 13, the Bible says, if any man, is any man afflicted? Apostle James is teaching now, he says, let him pray. Is that true? And then when you go down from verse 16, down, the Bible began to talk about the confessing your fault to one another, pray for one another that you may be healed. Then it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. That means it can accomplish much in the spirit. Next verse. Elijah, now the Bible is using a personality to show you the power and the excellency of prayer. That Elijah was a, a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain over a period of three years and six months. Next verse. The Bible says, and he prayed again. So when the Bible says that you shall bind and lose, he's showing you how it happens. It's not just by saying be bound or be loose. Uh -uh. That we bind and we lose. We allow and we disallow in the place of prayer. All through scripture and all through Bible history, it's been a people who set themselves to pray another come. The spirit and the bride telling the word to come. Show up, oh God, let us see your power and your glory again and again. We need the Lord to raise up prophetic intercessors again. People who are not just concerned about tea and bread and what they desire. Men and women like Anna the prophetess, whose assignment is to pray until they see the consolation of Israel. Anna the prophetess prayed Jesus from the realm of the spirit till he manifested in the physical realm. Are we together? Yes. Study all the revivals that have happened in this nation. They came on the wings of prayer and fasting. Men and women who prayed, Lord show up, come visit your people, manifest your power, let us see your glory again. I assure you, that once again, we will witness the move of God in a spectacular dimension. There's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be a great revival in our land. There's going to be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus they will be saved the spirit of Elijah restores the patterns it's a prophetic and apostolic system that foreruns the move of God that's why I told you Enoch and Elijah are two spiritual systems that if not allowed to find expression within a territory there cannot be a move of God. The call to intimacy and the call to genuine prayer. Are we blessed? What happens when people pray? There is an outpouring of the spirit. Joel chapter 2. And in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Lord, pour out your spirit on all the nations of the earth let your sons and daughters speak your words of prophecy send us dreams and visions 
the secrets of your heart. Lord, our faith is rising. Let creation see the coming of your name. There's going to be a great awakening. Oh, this will happen. There's going to be a great revival in our land. There's going to be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be. It's cure for apostasy and the deviation. Are we together now? When people contend for intimacy and the patterns of God are restored through prayer and fasting, the response from heaven, number one, is an outpouring of the spirit of revelation. The body of truth allocated for the manifestation of power, grace, and the possibility of the kingdom. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 calls it marvelous light. Marvelous light. The spirit of revelation coming corporately, not just upon individuals, but corporately upon the body of Christ within a sphere and within a territory. Ephesians chapter 3, when you read from verse 9 down to 21, Paul was talking about the spirit of revelation, the grace that can make all men see. Revelation is important because it will help us through the revelation of the word. We will be able to discern error. We will be able to discern apostasy, a deviation from the known patterns of God. And then there will be an outpouring of greater levels of the anointing. Now, this is very powerful. Please listen. So, this is what I'm teaching. That for you to experience the move of God in any territory, number one, Enoch. A call to intimacy. A call to hunger and the pursuit of God. Number two, Elijah. The spirit and supplication. Are we together now? That calls men back through prayer to authorize heaven. Because the heaven of heaven belongs to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. It will take men calling upon the name of the Lord from the earth. And when that happens, there is an outpouring. The response from heaven is number one, the outpouring of the spirit of revelation. This is what is beginning to happen. So you see that there are teaching priests arising. Are we together? It's a response to that prayer. Let me tell you this. Whether or not, you know, I met a woman. I think it was in Enugu or so. I met this great woman, very humble woman. Just, just, just let me know what happens to people when they are truly yielded. I met this woman after a conference. And then she began to tell me about the marvelous work, Pastor Daly my goodness and my God. I was almost going on my knees and saying, Madam, pray for me. Oh, you came for counseling, but I think I'm the one who needs the counseling. She just came to receive an impartation and to receive prayer. And when she was done telling me she has a camp, a prayer camp, and the kind of intercession and prayer for nations, many of the people you see standing strong today, they may not know the altars that support them. But there are people who have been burdened to ensure that they stand. 
And some of these people are nameless, faceless people. You may not see some of them on TV. They are not the Joshua Selmans. And so we are beguiled to think that those that we know a bit are the ones that are doing much. The day we stand before God, we will be surprised. Because before we stand on the queue of honor and reward, we will be surprised at how backward some of us will be. There are certain people, you will see an old mama that did not do much, but that woman spent her life making sure we stand. These are the people who will receive honor that is befitting their sacrifice. You will never receive a crown for what you didn't labor for. No. There are seven crowns according to scripture. The reward of the saints. Are we blessed? The spirit of of revelation and then the outpouring of greater levels of the anointing listen to me the anointing is very powerful why because it is God's empowerment to produce his dimension of possibilities I came in when the dear pastor this this precious woman of God was sharing I was so edified by what she was communicating there is a real warfare the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that this domain is already saturated with wicked spirits a legion, a legion had no place to stay. They had to make do with one man. We are only about 8 million people on earth. And these spirits were, the Bible says to the point that when they leave men, they still try to come back to find out. There is a real accommodation problem with these spirits. They are searching for bodies. Now, it's a very serious thing. And these spirits are not... They, they can coexist in a person. There is a real warfare at a national level, at an international level, at a community level. Paul gave us the organogram of the dark world. They are not careless. They are just, not just random spirits moving everywhere. They have their jurisdiction of function. There are spirits over churches, wicked spirits to attack the work of God there are spirits over cities there are spirits over communities there are spirits over nations there are spirits over territories and those spirits they multiply their wickedness based on your growth in the spirit and the kind of grace that is coming on your life it is true that's why there are people that until God sees their build up and their stamina, he cannot answer their prayer for more anointing. Every mantle that follows you, you must find out the attack that followed that mantle. If you want to be Elijah, know that you must prepare on how to deal with Jezebel because Jezebel follows Elijah. We pray for anointings and we pray for mantles, yet we do not study that those who carried it before us where, what were the systems because the methodology of the devil does not change it's a strategy that can be known from scripture if you are Samson you must create a system of protecting your hair are we together if you are Daniel you must sustain the ability to use the spirit of excellence to dumbfound the princes of Babylon so that you will be exalted and you will be made to last through the dispensation of three kings Study the grace you are carrying and study not just its system of operation but how the devil responds to those anointings. The response of darkness will change when you become anointed. So you receive a grace and God promotes you, multiplies you, gives you a higher apostolic and prophetic order of grace. The attacks will re-strategize themselves to suit that anointing. It is the reason why many times the Bible says, uh, well, not just because of that, but I think that, um, I think it was Pastor Poju that said something here. We have to be careful with premature exposure. Just because people are yielded and they love us very much, we should not out of pity just come and say, look, I think that sometimes we are harming them. They do not have the stamina and the spiritual intelligence to manage the challenges that come with that level of grace. We must sustain a non-emotional approach in lifting people in ministry. Because sometimes you can feel, ah, this person has been too kind. You, you love me too much. And when God is dealing with them, we don't allow the training to be complete. Remember what I said about emotions yesterday. Emotions are wonderful, but they have proven to be a serious interruption to God's program.
the outpouring of the Spirit. What will be the result? Isaiah 35, from verse 1 to 5. Goodness, find somewhere to pray. Hmm. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Verse 3. It says, Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. 4. Say unto them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Verse 5. It says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. When you read it, you see all of the manifestations that begin to happen. The coming move of God, according to Scripture, and according to, like Pastor Dele would say, reference from patriarchs. Men and women who we have followed passionately and we have vetted their integrity. We are sure that these people know God and walk with Him. I've had the privilege by the grace of God to meet a few people in their lifetime before they went to be with the Lord. Men and women who were at the epicenter of God's program. Others who knew others who were at the epicenter of God's program. And I wanted to hear what they had to say about the coming move of God. Because almost every one of them died and said, I still see something coming. That even though we had done well, this is not it. The character of the move of God that is coming, it will not be like the former revivals necessarily. Now, there are two dimensions of God's move. There is what we call the cyclical move of God. Are we together now? The cyclical move of God, meaning that as it was in the past, exactly so, you can study it. This is one of the blessings of mentorship. The eyes of experience can see and say, I know this. I can, you can be guided. But there are certain moves of God that are new. The pattern may not be a pattern that has happened in time past. I perceive that the move that is coming is like that. For the Bible says, blow the trumpet in Zion. It says, sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. When it begins to talk about the formation of this army, it's the Lord himself that is leading them in front. Because the nature of that move, no human being can use his experience to guide that move accurately. It has to be the Lord himself. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is not just a move that is spiritual in context. It is a move that is also economic in context. It is a move that has to do with, according to prophet Micah, Zechariah, they, they talk about the mountain of the Lord's house being exalted above other mountains and that all nations will flow to it. They will say to one another, come, let us go to the mount of the Lord are we together now? Yes. He says he will teach us his ways. So it's not going to be like other times because we have a lot of things in our civilization right now that makes that move complex. One of it is the power of the media. One of it is a greater level of sociological enlightenment. We have a judicial system that can protect and can fight the purposes of God. So the strategy, the blueprint... Is, is a technology that God must import and give us by his wisdom. But we know one thing for sure, and maybe this is what I'll use to wrap up. That the global harvest, as far as the program of God is concerned, the global harvest is a reality. Matthew chapter 24, when you read the first 14 verses, the Bible begins to talk about what we call the signs of the end times. I don't want to go into that because of my time. The Bible talks about nations rising against nations. Are we together? Kingdom against kingdoms, etc., etc. Let's go to verse 14. And then the Bible says that all of these things are just the birth pains. 14. 24 and verse 14. Read with me, please. It's projected. Ready? One to read. And this gospel 
of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. Stop. Stop. Please keep that scripture. Notice he never said the gospel shall be preached in all the earth. There is a difference between the earth and the world. Are we together now? Yes. The root word that is used there is still the word that is later interpreted nations. Not just countries, systems, structures. What we have come to know in the body of Christ as the seven mountains. That this gospel must be taken strategically. Not just from country to country. The media has made it possible that from one point you can talk to the whole world. So he's not just talking about physically traveling alone. Uh -uh. That we must through our alignment with the spirit, we must import a technology that grants us the authority to take this gospel across these seven mountains. Are we together now? Yes. The concept of the seven mountains, it was not just an invention of men. These are the mind control systems. Whoever sits upon that sphere of influence controls a section of God's activity. Remember Psalm 24? The earth, its fullness, the mind control systems, and the inhabitants. This is what Satan is fighting. And all of these seven mountains thrive on this. The earth, the fullness, the mind control system. Right now, there are certain nations where you cannot take this teaching. Right now, no. It will not be allowed. Not mainstream media. And even their social media platforms have been so censored. Are we together now? How many social media platforms have had to pull down certain teachings? Even in recent times, they've had to doctor and manage their terms and, and, and so on and so forth. These are all subtle strategies, ultimately leading to the shutting of the voice. Remember what they told the apostles, do not preach in that name and that doctrine again. So there must be men and women coming in the spirit and the power of Daniel and Joseph who God will grant access to the seat of governance. There will have to be people, every armed robber comes from a family. Every thief and troublemaker that is disturbing society comes from a family somewhere. There has to be men and women that God will raise to help us protect the sanctity of the family front so that our children will not define adults as anything. It's still male and female. But now you ask children, you know what I'm talking about. There are all kinds of devilish inventions and they are indoctrinating our children. Then we have the mountain of education like Pastor Dele was talking about. Men and women, this is a major mind control system. Are you aware how many years an individual spends to be educated in as much as we know secular education? Imagine investing that amount of time and your life under the mentorship of someone, a curriculum you were not part of those who designed. There has to be men and women who advocate the purposes of God. And on legal access, get to that mountain. Imagine that our vice chancellors are filled with the Holy Spirit. Prophetic and discerning and accurate. My question is, what stops that agenda? We have to be intentional. Saying one day God will do it is not so. There has to be a, like an architecture designed with intelligence. Terrorists did not just start killing people. They planned it. They gave themselves a, maybe a 20 year Oh, you, you will need to go to school for this. We will need a doctor who can inject people. So because of that, you are going to study medicine. It's not about passion. That's what what you are going to do so that this role will be achieved and so while they were in class with their colleagues the rest thought they had a classmate but his his attention was unusual not just because he wanted to get an md or mbbs he knew that he needed an authorization to enter that system right now there is no there is no part of the seven mountains where people the mountain of economy, the king of Tyre sits there himself. But there's an army rising up. There's an army rising.
crazy now There's an army rising up They will break every chain Break every chain Can I tell you this? There is nowhere in scripture where Satan ever took God unawares. Mm -mm. The intelligence, the all-seeing eye, the light, he shrouds himself with light as a mystery. He does not wait for time to reveal events. He is called Alpha, Omega. There is no end in between. And so, according to his predeterminate counsel, he's already created a formation to manage this pride of Babylon. There is an emergence of men and women, not just men in pulpit ministry. Please hear me. This must become our advocacy. To train only men of God is a dangerous campaign. We more that they all come and pray and fast together. But once we are done training them in church, we must diverge them to the geography of their assignments. Where a businessman is fasting the same way a pastor is fasting. And you are saying, why go through that burden? I thought it's just an intellectual adventure. You said, don't be carried away by my suit and tie. There is an apostle behind that suit and tie. Sends to the marketplace. You know, one of the mistakes that we make, and men of God, we must take, we must take responsibility for that mistake, is that in a bid to keep the sense of spirituality, we have downplayed every other mountain that is not the mountain of religion. So we tell people, don't worry. All you have to do is focus. Be a man of God. So when people begin to find unusual desire for the things of God, and they find out that why is education pulling me like this? They become guilty for wanting an area that is not ministry. They don't know what to do with their passion and their hunger. Whereas there is a, the Lord of harvest the Holy Ghost people to the geography of their impact let me tell you this I said it the last time I was here if God is calling you to be a prophet or an apostle the character and the nature of your training will never be the same as someone who is going to become a politician are we together after you pray five six hours you may be tired but the guy who is called into the prophetic can receive a vision to continue and turn that prayer into three days. You do not use the template of your training to bully or demean another. It is a, it is a training that is earmarked. You will find out that that educationist can sit down for three days and not come out. And all he's doing is studying. We must sustain this discernment. Because whilst we have our members, not all of them will become men of God like we call it. Not all of them will become lecturers. Not all of them will become business people. We must sustain the intelligence to discern the geography of their assignment and to help them like Eli helped Samuel. It is one of the greatest balance we can bring to what is going on right now in the body of Christ. There are many people on the pulpit today who have no business with the pulpit. The nature of their call they are so ineffective and they are wondering. It's not backsliding. The more they know God, the more they fail in pulpit ministry because their knowledge of God is pushing them closer to their assignment. I hear the chains falling. Hey, I hear the chains. Listen. Listen to me. In 2005, I had a vision. And in that vision, the Lord began to show me the coming move. And this is what I saw, and it's consistent with scripture. I saw people in Asia, like young people, and I saw fire just dropping on one, then spreading to another, then spreading to another, then spreading to another. In another vision, I saw... Europe like the map of Europe and it looked like a rotten fruit a fruit that was becoming rotten and all of a sudden at the speed of light 
there were people who were largely black skinned just came there and they were doing something to the fruit it was strange but it was like how do I put it now they were adding something to that fruit that was stopping it from rotting even the ones that were already rotting I knew that this was the move of God you see these missionaries from Europe and the US they brought the gospel that gospel was a seed the parable of the talents he gave unto one five talents he gave unto one he should not remain like that that rejected stone for many years in the midst of our governmental failure and all that has been going on there has still been a making and now there is the harvest we are taking it back to these regions but we are not giving them the way they brought it to us for it to be an error to give them the same thing they gave us most of them did not understand the gospel of the kingdom they only understood the gospel of salvation that reveals the love of the father in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ but now we are taking by the grace of God the whole counsel of God through the election of grace these people from a land whose rivers divide weak in themselves Pastor Dele God is going to start sending many people from this nation believe me across Europe across Asia across don't be surprised if it's you you keep planning before his voice comes but I assure you there will be a lot of interruption of men's programs and for some of you you will doubt it because it was not in what he told you yesterday remember I told you that there are many levels of God's will there is his predeterminate counsel but there are people who have failed God in those regions he will he, he needs a testament for his name so God will have to bring certain people and say you know what let me add to your assignment it was not in the original blueprint I'm speaking to you prophetically. God is going to be raising people by the Spirit. They did not have the desire to have maybe branches and so on and so forth. But God will start moving them again. Go to these regions. Take the harvest. It's a seed of gratitude to them. Listen. There were many things they didn't know. But some of them left their comfort for life. They waved their wives and their children goodbye and they never saw their dead bodies. They came to Africa and brought the gospel. Now that God has walked in us, oh rejected stone, hear me. Rejoice not over me, he said. For while they were laughing at us, while they were mocking us and saying Africa will not rise, the spirit of God was doing something. And now God is empowering us with the whole counsel of God. And he's sending us with a grace and an anointing. All of the spiritual equippings. We are going to reintroduce intimacy. We are going to reintroduce. Right now, listen to me. I say this respectfully. I know that there are people following from the West and all across the world. I say it with every sense of passion. But there are certain dimensions that have been lost in the West and in Europe. For those of us who frequent these regions, I'm sure when you step the shores, you say, no, this, this cannot be where Smith Wigglesworth came from. This cannot be where the revival, the Azusa Street, you visit some of those places and they are almost like monuments. Hmm. It is for this reason God put this summit. There is a trumpet that is about to sound. Not the coming of Christ, the move of God. And it's a clarion call. For some of you, visions that you saw decades, you ran away and got a job. No problem. God allowed you so that you don't think he's unjust. But I assure you that vision is still lingering around your head. And even if it's after 20 years, one day you will have to come back and answer that call again. This kingdom come project, as I call it, will require finances. Is the reason why God is raising apostles and prophets in the marketplace so that our advocacy is not the marketing of flesh to buy cars to buy houses thank God for those things but they are very mundane if they do not have kingdom come there are people that God is raising oh we're getting back Kenneth Kenneth Copeland prophesied one time during the pastors and uh, the ministers conference at Canaan land he said he saw the revival the tent meeting the grace that was upon the tent meetings coming back again I know it is true 
Nigeria today, we don't do so many crusades again for very obvious reasons because of the security situation. Do you see that it's not just about security? It's an attack. The same way a parliament came and stopped prayer, it was not just, it was targeting just one man. Social media that should be a platform for advocating the purposes of God, the devil is now using it to make people fight themselves across the body. A platform that should, should shout Jesus with one click. Imagine the miracle of the media, Pastor Dele. I am standing here ministering and nations across the world, people in their cars, their homes, their laptops, their gadgets are listening and the same power, the same presence. We waste an opportunity to reveal Jesus. We waste an opportunity to glorify him. But by the grace of God and by the authority of scripture, there is a move of God that is coming. Please hear me. Don't give up on your little prayer groups. Do you know why God began to bring non-denominational platforms? Because he knew it would be difficult to break the barrier of denominations. Denominations have a construct that even though the people there have observed the challenge, the system is so grounded and has been honored for a long time, it will be difficult for him to penetrate. So God came up with a strategy and the strategy is to float non-denominational platforms so that what you will easily not receive in your local platform, I'm speaking apostolically now, you can have the chance to now come to a non-denominational platform. Many people would never be filled with the Holy Ghost, just remain in an orthodox circle so God allowed them to come to a non-denominational platform whether it was a campus fellowship or some kind of meeting somewhere and they stepped into it and had an encounter today there are Catholics that are filled with the Holy Ghost there are Anglican priests that are on fire with accuracy and balance and the thing is that God didn't allow them to leave those platforms he still kept them there because sometimes the place of your pain is also the place of your assignment Oh Moses, you only leave Egypt for a while. You will still go back there. That is still the place of your assignment. This must happen before his majesty returns. The advocacy that he will return just any time is wonderful and is spiritual. But let me tell you sincerely, it will not happen that way. Do you know, I'm glad that your pastor is doing his, his, his PhD thesis and we had a brief but wonderful moment. His intelligence is very stunning. Are you aware that there are about a little over, I think he's almost getting to 8 billion people now. Find out how many of them have had the gospel. Not how many of them bear Christian names have had the gospel constructively presented. There are lands in this world, this frame of earth that we live in, who have not had the gospel. I assure you. All of this is to one end. The global harvest. The move of God is not some advocacy. You see why God, there will, the move of God will not be credited to any one person. This is a strange thing. It's usually the, the, the way it had been that one person will forerun that move. Can I tell you something? I, oh dear, do I say this? You see what happened with NSAS? Is a prophetic adumbration of something happening in the realm of the spirit. How could a move be so powerful without faces? This is how the move of God is coming. You will just see an inferno of light and power sweeping across education and it cannot be credited to a particular individual. This honor, no man will take it to himself. The Lord of the harvest coordinating the systems. So for some of you, the prayer groups 30 people, 40 people, you think you are not doing much, but it's a contribution to that kingdom come agenda. There is a prophet, there is an apostle that you are raising. Just because you may not see it, it doesn't look like it, does not mean it is not it. There are mothers today 
who gave birth to one or two children and stopped giving birth. God forced them. The woman planned not to get pregnant. She still got pregnant. You know why? Because the third child has a role to play. And so... <laughs> You don't know the desperation in the heart of God to see his purposes come to pass. He will shift and change structures. War betides any man who fights this global move. He will meet the vicious, the hand of God directly. For this is a move that cannot be fought. I assure you, you may fight a church. You may fight an individual, but you can't fight his program. Because his jealousy is back of his program. Therefore, as I seek to round up, we are going to pray. Goodness, our time is gone. Forgive me, Pastor Daly. But listen to me. There are two prayer points that I want to bring. Number one is, Father, what is my role in your program? Redirect me and cause me to be effective. What is my role? And what will it require for some of you, your role will require training because you will be standing among kings. For some of you, your role will require you to be sound in business because of that which you have to do. For some of you, your role will require you to contend for higher levels of anointing because of the mighty things that God will do with you. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. all those following please make sure you are praying father we pray for the global harvest let the seven mountains be filled with men and women who have been walked upon men of intimacy and power men of prayer men who have understood the patterns of God men filled with knowledge and revelation Man full of the Spirit, guided by His grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. I'd like us to pray that the grace and the unction reserved for this season, that let the windows of heaven be opened. And let that grace, listen to me, listen to me. We will never be able to push this final battle. Rick Joyner wrote it in his book. You read his book, The Final Quest, The Call. Are we together now? He saw this prophetically and he began to warn the body of Christ. No matter what dimension, what part of the seven mountains you will occupy, there is a real contention against gates and forces. And many of them are ancient. We will need a renewed baptism of genuine spiritual power. I thought I would have the time to talk about the spirit of power. He's not only the Lord of the harvest. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. I have power by the spirit. There is a dimension of spiritual power. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. There are forces that will leave no stone unturned to see that they wreck our lives, our churches, the gates of hell. There is such a coordinated system of onslaught from darkness and we will need the power of the Holy Ghost. We will need genuine unction. More than just the grace to prophesy and call names. More than just the grace for people to fall down and stand up. We need territorial anointings. Graces that you stand from one region and utter a word. And the spirit of grace will take that word across regions. Are you ready to pray? Father, for your glory and for your kingdom, let the unction assigned for this move, let it come upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. She prato sege bala hashanda la katos. Lekete prende ge de baroto soto brakata. Shale sabranda do sele pasku brahaske de bahashia. The grace. You are in ministry. Cry for the grace for signs, wonders. The grace for accurate exegesis of scripture. You are in business. Pray for the grace that distinguishes you. 
you are in politics, the grace that grants you access above the powers that be, the systems and the structures. 